That's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. I call the City Council meeting to order September 24, 2019. The time is 6.03. Can you understand it? Clerk, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It is right now. Oh, this part. That's okay. um, so, yeah, uh, agenda update. Oh, roll call, please. sorry. Yeah. Councilmember Weiss. Here. Councilmember Youngskevich. Councilmember Gruber. Councilmember Cook. Here. Councilmember Hatfield. Here. Councilmember Missile. Here. Councilmember Adams. Present. Mayor House. Here. I'll make a motion to excuse tonight's absentees. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed to any. Absentees are excused. And then I have one agenda update. We're going to have the uh, chief go right after we do the consent agenda here. Consent agenda for the evening is 16386 to 16403, and EFT is as follows. Accounts payable in the amounts of $73,483.68. ACH accounts payable in the amount of $8,753.33. And payroll as of 20, September 20th, 2019, is about $10,599.37. And then we have the minutes from August 27th and September 10th. Move consent agenda. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor of consent agenda say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Then before the executive session, I'm going to listen to the chief. Uh, thank you. I'll be real quick. Um, just for the month of September, we responded to 73 calls of service for within sea limits of Roslyn. Uh, I looked it up real quick. 642 calls so far this year. Um, the Last biggest event that we've had since I've been here was, was the parade. Uh, Councilman Weiss and, and Mike Woodell and I met prior to the parade and everything was set up well. I just wanted to know it all went well, except uh, it was very well attended, uh, which created a pretty big traffic jam. So I was hoping to have an after action review between, with, uh, with you and Mike again okay. to discuss some uh, possible options we could do to try and get that a little bit more running a little bit more smoothly for next year. I was up to Perfect. Sure. Appreciate your thoughts on that, Chief. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Or? Oh, I heard there was a ticket issue with this. Uh, <laughs> with this <laughs> parking ticket for parking? parking? In front of the monitor? Yeah. Congratulations. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, most most time when we get out to write the ticket, uh, people come out and move. So. Yeah. Pretty effective to stand there. I, I think I could stand there with this book and people would probably respond. Close so. enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, with the market and everything uh, yeah. done for the year, we'll have less parking issues. And we'll we're going to remove all the snow off the bubbles. That we, we need to. We have to. Yeah, because last year you. There I called mess. twice for parking on bulbs. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, obviously, you can't ticket yeah. something, you can't see a line right. or a curve. Yeah. Or, mm -hmm. I totally get it, you know. Um, yeah, so but it's our, it goes on us. So we're, we're working on our plan. Yep. <laughs> good, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> you got a few more. You want to shovel some snow? <laughs> 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 All right. Well, thanks, Chief. Thank, well, thank you, you very much, work. Chief. Thank you. I'm getting, thanks. Just get a hold of me uh, whenever. Yeah, you will do. Then I uh, officially call an executive session for five minutes, I believe. Discuss the legal matters. Do we need to talk to the final over? Yeah. Oh, we're having a call? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Four five five minutes. minutes. Oh. What's your estimate? 15? I'd say 15. Okay. 15. 15 minutes? I'm recording. This is recording now. I'll have it in the meantime. Okay, you know, text it and copy it. Yeah. <laughs> You're recording. I'll take your pictures from my Facebook. Like you, she can write to me. <laughs> we are ready. No, they're not. We just preserve the way. Oh, they're, they're testing the waters. Is all they're doing. This is about eight thousand dollars. Just being being good. That's about what I'm just thinking. But anyway. I think the yeah, shot was I was just up there watching. Okay, the good, yeah. <laughs> I read it with the blanks on it. That was pretty good. Game so. changes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm really not in a hurry to send it off. Was, they, was this for the, the trees up on the ridge, the brown trees, the bill? The beetle kill? Yeah. yeah. This is the report from the LSP. Yeah, this is. Uh,
Okay, for Wait, the Thanks for right. waiting for us. Because they're going to make a recommendation of the <sighs> problem. What's his? And get you should have gotten the email. The report from the board okay. yeah. right now, but I'm coming out. Yeah, she said it all. I can present it. No, I just need to look at it. I was telling you. Oh, yeah, he should be. I can probably have it. I'll just look at it again. It's a little better. Okay, call the uh, council meeting back in session after the executive session ended. Are you re recording? Yep, yeah. all good. Okay, the next, uh, I don't do it. Is there any administrative reports that anybody wants to give? Friends in the library, planning? Yeah. Wait, hold on. Then you go first. Okay. Say your name, please. Uh, Lynn Louise, 400 North 7th, Roslyn, representing the Friends of the Roslyn Library. And uh, I'm sure you're all aware that we have a fundraiser coming up on Saturday. And so we uh, would like all of your support. <laughs> and um, we uh, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Do you have a status report from I have, Mark? Um, Mark had his meeting last Thursday with the engineers, from the electrical engineer, the mechanical engineer, and the plumbing and so forth. And they were re basically revamping what that scope of work would be to allot that amount of money. And so they'll get back to us. I'm going to meet Mark, not tomorrow morning, but Thursday morning here on site. And then we'll walk upstairs as we're sort of documenting some things so we can get to the engineers so we can continue it. We'll be a couple more weeks before we get back with Mark. Okay. And be back. Well, we all know we're just around the Yep, yep. And I think, I don't think we have, I don't even think that, I think we're last in line. We're really close to getting the grant signed. I don't think we're. Contract's not signed. Yeah, they put us to the back of the line. Yeah, no, no, no. I think they put us to the back of the line and they sent it back for the contract. Well, they may well have because when we're trying to get funds from the friends to the city, we may have gotten pushed to the end of the line. Mm -hmm. but, um, well, and I did have, I met them, actually, I had Sarah meet the little contractor that was going to rebuild the right, that's all. Yep, but you did see him then. Yep. Mm -hmm. So he started, started on that also last week. And, uh, as, soon, I mean, as soon as I meet with Mark, I'll give you a little bit of update when I find out. Well, we'll be looking forward to it because uh, natives are getting restless. I'm sure they are. And I think the only native here is me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, anyway, getting back to the fundraiser. Uh, is anybody interested in uh, asking for donations from folks, their friends, and, and uh, giving one of these out? for a thank you note for them donating. What kind of donation are you looking for? Uh, whatever they give. One for like silent auction kind of thing? Or just no, one, one no it's just requesting them to make a donation. And when they do, you give them a thank you card. We can't sell these because of problems with, well, it's not a problem but the liquor license right. mm -hmm. for the distillery mm -hmm. with us as a 501c3. Right. Um, you have to be very yes, careful. Okay. Yes. I, I took a pack of 10 and I was doing them for like a 10 or a 20 dollar donation. Mm -hmm. And so I cleaned out my 10. Yeah. She gave them to me a couple weeks. Can we leave some uh, 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 office? And she timed uh, lots of people in town to pawn off. I, I know you have they, 10 or 20 bucks. You, you can afford a drink. Or I'm just sending you over to the same habit as we're just trying to think of sending people over yes, to the library when they come in here to make a, a donation for her. So just I'll bring you a ticket. Yeah. Yeah. Just a reminder. Yeah. Are we out of these? No. Kathy has 200 more. Okay. Oh, I think they could be. Okay, I don't know. Make the ask. Yeah. Uh, okay. it, it doesn't have to be by Saturday. I mean, this could continue mm -hmm. afterwards. Okay. I mean, mm -hmm. people can use them anytime. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, okay. Uh, I'm going to be out of town Saturday, that's why, so I won't make sure I get up again. Right. Okay. okay. Um, just for information's sake. We are at 500 at this point. Okay. So, great. Okay. And this is for 
um, staff time or for building for rent? Rent, rent, for, rent for the library okay. during construction. Okay. Thank you very much. Do what? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that turned everything I had to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you for your effort on this, on this issue. Yeah. Well, okay. the person who's really putting work into this is Kathy Craig. I just happen to be here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're modest because you're here many times. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Planning this trip to join Just a quick one, yeah. Today, yeah. Rodin 301 North East Street Planning is where the mission commission. Just wanted to um, thank the city for the opportunity for the training that we had like a, last week or so. I thought that was a really useful and helpful kind of thing. Um, commissioners really appreciate it. We have a couple of commissioners that have to catch up at one that they're going to work on it. <clears throat> uh, we've been doing a subcommittee work on um, subdivisions. Uh, Kathy Cook and Catherine Johnson have been probably 10 hours to kind of looking at other subdivision codes, looking at our code, trying to um, modify ours so it's kind of more up to date. Um, Michelle has the draft and I think uh, the whole commission is going to look at it next week and it should get to council here within a couple of weeks, I hope. It might go to the lawyer first, but um, that's been our focus. We're looking forward to working possibly on a dark sky ordinance and um, updating the um, accessory dwelling unit ordinance. So those are our plans for the future, so we'll get back to them how those go. Yeah. Great. Yep. Thank cool. you. All right, then uh, on to, I think, unless CAC or cemetery, anybody here? There's, I can just say for the CAC, there's this on the back of the um, cemetery commission. Just a picture of the kiosks that were donated by the Chamber of Commerce. One's going to go up by the Alaska Alley Trail. I think the other one's slated for up on um, TNC land. Um, so. It's in process. Yeah. Signage. Cool. Okay, then on to our presentation, the uh, phone market more. Or Jokes. Thank you. Thank you.
So just wanted to give an idea about some of the market. So we had, as a result of the bump outs this year, we had to reduce our numbers for the numbers of booths that we have because we're constrained on the those. So we are down to um, what had, it's not down, it's still a very high number of, of booth spaces of about 85 booth spaces. We're also able to cooperate with the owners of what had been Harper's to use some of the Harper's yard area for any overflow that we have, which was wonderful. Um, so of the vendors that were there, we have uh, about 103 active vendors that all apply. We had to decline a lot because we have gotten a lot of people from around the state who have heard about the market and have a great interest in being here because they understand what a great market it is and how well it's run. And so we get, we get applications from all over the state to participate in our market. And we've turned about 18 or more away um, at the beginning of the season and throughout the season. Um, on average, we have about 67 vendors that can fill up those 85 spaces. Some have double boot spaces, and so we. And most of those days, we have a full allotment of those 85 spaces. Um, and I think it's really important to know that of those people, 67 vendors on average, 33 of them are from Upper Town. That means that there are 33 individual non-brick-and-mortar businesses that are active on the street, making money over 14 days in the summertime. And these are registered businesses. We do take their business license. And so as registered businesses, they have to go through the whole business license process that has to allocate any funds that they make, which um, over those 14 dates, there's about $350,000 that we see transferred over to vendors on the street. That's what from our uh, keeping notes, anonymous vendor input on how much is made after each market. That's um, what we have as a sum, $350,000. Um, and so each of those vendors who is active as part of their business license, they have to provide some of that information. They have to document that that is happening here in Boston. So we want to make sure that that's um, known. Um, and so we we want to just kind of highlight that importance of the market as an economic engine, that it is not just the brick and mortar businesses that we have limited space for in Roslyn. It is all these independent entrepreneurial uh, businesses that are active and from, um, from our community. So um, you're going to hear a little bit more about our budget and about uh, what happened from, um, from Sky here. Thanks. Hi, Sky Stahl. Still don't remember my parents' addresses, <laughs> um, but I reside in Shoreline. <laughs> uh, so thanks, Jen, and thanks to the council for seeing us. Uh, about four months ago, we presented the first time, and I shared some of the findings from the consulting re review that I did. Um, shared plans for boosting farmer sales, which included uh, initiating food stamps, which we have done. Next year, we're hoping to get more steam behind that program. Um, <laughs> conducted the business surveys where we spoke with all of the business owners that have retail spaces on Pennsylvania, in which they shared unanimous, unanimous support for the market, um, with parking being the, the, big, the big issue that we talked about with everyone. Um, we shared about the growth of the market coming from 1,500 to 3,200 weekly customers between 2013 and 2018. Um, and at that point, our record was 4,500. And this year, we broke that record and hit 5,100 on Labor Day this year. So we had over 5,000 people um, on that street in those four hours. Um, and then we spoke a little bit about the budget as well. Um, at that time, our account balance was lower than it had ever been going into a season, so we were all really concerned about that. Um, we projected our revenue expense and expenses at a $6,000 deficit, so we were kind of strapped at that point. Um, we were thinking that we would get about 48000 only from our booth fees and merch sales with projected expenses at 54000 So we were going to seek that um, outstanding amount from outside sources like sponsorships and grants. Um, so now that we've done the season, we've got the numbers, the numbers are in, 
uh, our revenues actually ended up being 46, and that did include about 5,000 usable grant money from Suncadia as well as uh, the Suncadia. What is it? Oh, the food mm -hmm. enhancement. Mm -hmm. And then the RDA also gave us some money. Is that so 5,000 total? It was, I no. believe, the total amount that was granted was seven something, mm -hmm. but 23 was, we didn't use, was unusable because we didn't, it, it was, it was for like things that we didn't have to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be, that money is basically in limbo and not reflected on these numbers. Yeah. Um, and then, so this was lower, I mean it did include some grants and it was lower than we were expecting without grants. Uh, so this was largely due to less than expected booth fee uh, revenues, um, which is a combination of just vendor fluctuation from year to year, as well as losing some of those spaces with the bump outs. Um, and then our expenses ended up being 43000 which was, a, we all kind of breathed a breath of fresh air after <laughs> we, you know, made it through the season. Some of our big um, expense items are um, our labor, our live music, we bring musicians from all over the state and sometimes uh, all over the country to play. Um, about 6,000 merchandise, which is pretty much a wash when we calculate the revenues from that. Um, and then we, this year we had the new expense to the city for services like trash and staff time for dealing with those things. Um, so we were pleased to have lower expenses this year than we projected, and that was due to some frugal spending in a few areas. We cut our advertising budget by half, relying more heavily on word of mouth and reputation this year, which seemed to look fun because our attendance was still up you know, to par. Um, our, we didn't have as many serv need for outside services beyond our internal staff this year. We were planning on hiring an admin person, which didn't happen, and there were no big equipment investments um, as well as no unforeseen expenses like having to close for a fire, danger, or anything like that. So it was a good year financially for us in terms of not breaking the bank. Um, so we're returned to a healthy account balance. We feel ready to move into 2020, better, readier than we were last year. Um, but we still don't have a lot of wiggle room for additional, you know, there is some wiggle room, but not a lot of wiggle room for any, you know, unforeseen uh, charges. And, um, but we're ready to work with the city to address any concerns that it has and so that we can continue offering local food and crafts and serving as a tourism magnet to bring 3,000 to 5,000 people to our streets every summer. <laughs> and that, Mark is going to take, take us out. Well, Mark, we're doing 301 North B Street. <clears throat> so before the start of the season, we um, gave a presentation to the city and explained the list of terms that the vendors we have already set. Uh, but we do want to request, uh, assuming that we have some of our board members meet with the admin committee to discuss next year's finances so that neither the city, the market, nor the vendors have surprises uh, so that we can start the year with a, you know, everybody clear on costs and um, fees and whatever. So we're ready to work with the city to pay an appropriate event fee and for any direct city services we use. However, we did want to address a number of other things. There have been comments made online and elsewhere that the market has uh, gotten away without paying our fair share or taking advantage of the city or somehow profiting at the expense of the city in our presentation today is in part to address those rumors. So as Jen noted, while the market provides some paid employment, most of us are volunteers. We're not making money off the market. We're provide, doing it because it provides a service to the community. Uh, and while there are uh, difficulties because of the market, meaning parking, um, it does increase the city's parking challenges, but parking difficulties are not solely due to the market, as anyone who tries to park downtown on Saturday can testify. We bring many people to town, which helps local businesses and helps 
provide a robust and thriving downtown to all residents. Um, there was also this year some controversy on social media from some who suggested that the market move to Runge Park and we want to take this opportunity to address that. The idea has been raised with us before and we have seriously considered it. However, there's a number of, uh, you know, that pesky reality thing. Uh, we have, as you said, you know, uh, up to 85 booths every weekend, uh, 65 vendors, that's at least 65 or 70 vehicles who load and unload every market. Uh, if we have an average of 75 vendors per market and two vehicle trips per booth, that means that would mean 2,100 vehicle incursions into the park, uh, which would pose a danger to the sod and to the sprinkler system. Additionally, there would be the impact of three or 4,000 more people uh, every market marching around on the, uh, on the park. We estimate this year the total number of attendants, not the total number of people, because some people come every weekend, uh, but the total number of visits is approaching 50,000 visits a season. Uh, we also note that moving would not offer a real solution to the parking issues. It would just move the congestion a few blocks. And such a move would also have the unintended consequence of taking all those people away from the downtown businesses, which is one of the reasons why we picked up the market when Janine started to close, you know, felt she had to close it, was because um, that's a lot of traffic for our local businesses. Uh, and if we move them, people will come to the market and then leave, and they won't be walking around downtown while we do that. Um, finally, right now, the market has to move once a season to accommodate the Labor Day parade. If we move to the park, we have to move at least for the vintage trailer show and for the log show, and that would also impact picnics or whatever else anybody wanted to do in the park on Sundays. <coughs> Since we feel that uh, while we understand the the impetus for the suggestion that it's uh, not a practical solution. Another thing that people have often suggested to us is that we have a longer season. Um, and there are significant reasons why we have decided not to do that. First, if we started earlier, there would not be much fresh produce available. So it just, you know, it would be a craft market, not a farmer's market. On the other end, if we extend it into the fall, the weather becomes unpredictable. The number of attendees falls, which would make the market less attractive to vendors. And also the number of people who come to the market falls because there's sometimes there's games. Uh, <laughs> lastly, since many of us are volunteers, we get burned out. Right now, it's sustainable. It's manageable. We like to do it. We're glad when it's done and we miss it after it's been gone for a few months. But if it becomes burdensome, we can't donate endless time. So the market, as currently structured, is sustainable with the right balance of placement, composition, cost, and length of season. Our nonprofit volunteer board built on the model started by Johnine Collins, which utilizes the great setting of Roslyn, uses the market as an inducement to bring people to town, provides sustainable, fresh food to locals and visitors, offers local crafters a place to sell their wares, and it helps bring people to local businesses. Um, we sought to create a model that was sustainable, oriented to the community, and not dependent on any one person. We've created, we think, a virtuous cycle. The vendors are happy, they tell other vendors. We haven't had to go out and recruit vendors. We have more than we could use, and that's because of the vendors that we have are happy with it. They don't have to pay too much, and they have lots of customers. Um, the local crafters have an outlet, outlet for their goods. The mix of farmers, food uh, processors, crafters is an is a enticing mix. Um, and the market organization through our, our booth fees can cover costs, though sometimes we do need the help of grants. As we have grown, we've also provided a four-hour live music festival every market Sunday. And this balance of all of these elements has worked well, with more vendors and more attendees every year, growing not only the market, but Roslyn's reputation and attraction. You notice sometimes the, the uh, announcements of uh, you know, places, good places to go, talk about Roslyn and then the uh, historic <coughs> nature of it and the feel of the town, and some of them mention the market. 
as one of the most attractive in the state. But this virtuous cycle could become a downward spiral. Vendors felt they were being charged too much, and we had fewer, and then, then attendees don't tell them, and then we don't have the money to pay the musicians. So we want to keep it on that upward spiral. Um, so we want to note that there are the two city decisions that have impacted the market. One, the sidewalk project bump out decreased our potential booth space, hence our potential revenue from booth fees. And two, when the, shape, the state shifted its procedures, the city declined to keep accepting city business license fees from vendors. That's something we've required since we understood the impact on the city and that brought in several thousand dollars of income to the city. And that decrease in city income was a city decision, not a market decision. So we, want to, we stand ready to work with the city to pay our for actual city costs related to the market. Um, but some people seem to feel that because the market is successful for attendees and vendors and downtown businesses, we must be holding in money. And that is not a reflection of reality. Uh, we cover our expenses, and this year we have generous grants from both the RDA and the Sun Media Fund for Community Advancement. So we are continuing to be committed to keeping the market, to keeping that virtuous cycle going up, and to paying our fair share to the city, and to continuing to build the quality, reputation, and our positive contribution to Ross. Thank you. Questions? I have a couple. Can you, I, I wouldn't quite track what you were saying about the city business licenses, because I know that there's a change at the state level, which yeah. the city does not control. So we originally, we were the ones that asked our vendors to oh. buy city right. li business licenses. Right. And um, we did that knowing that that would bring in revenue to the city in right. some way. I see what especially you're saying. So we had, we were, the, it was not anything we had to do, we did it. And we were told last year to not do it because it was a burden um, to process those. And because probably the Bureau of Labor um, procedures that the city opted out of to do the online streamlining uh, process of the business license. Oh, I didn't realize we had a choice in that. No, we didn't have a choice. The, the state changed it. So if you do under $2,000 with a business, we can't force them to get a business license in the city. So it, it was in the Bureau of Labor statistics that said cities that opted out and Rousing was listed as it. So Opted out of the online. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We didn't. We didn't participate in the online, so they can buy a business license. But they still don't have to buy it if they do less than two thousand dollars worth of business in the city. So that's just the state. We were required to adopt, or adopt a new ordinance that excluded anything under two thousand dollars from having right. to obtain. That was a state requirement. We didn't have a choice. Based on the reported department revenue. Mm -hmm. income. And then, okay, two other questions. Well, can, um, can an outside entity require like? The city doesn't, can't require it, but could the market We can't, by state law, we're not allowed to require a business license for anyone that does business and doesn't have a permanent address in the city limits. So. But like Sky's saying, can you, can the board, can the farmer's market board enforce that? That's what we have. Can they make their vendors buy a city license? It comes back to the same thing. Just as like a policy for, to be a member. Yes. Yeah. And to bring in their property. It's really yeah, sales tax. Yeah. Maybe it goes back to the state, but none of it goes back to us? No, just the license fee. Just the license, just the license fee. fee but yeah. we can't legally, I mean, you could require whatever you want, but you can't force them. I mean, nobody can force them to buy it if the we, state law we, doesn't. We but as, did, as a well, board, we, we requested them to buy it, to participate in our market. And right. Mm -hmm. right, I understand that, but I guess what I'm getting at is when, when they come through the doors, we can't force, I can't force them to buy it. So I have, I mean, our no. ordinance says if you do under $2,000 worth of business, you don't have to buy one in the city limits. Right, but our vendor policy mm -hmm. was that they should, they had to buy the city business license. But you can't do that. We, that's just not a thing anymore. Well, that's well, what we were told. That. We well, were told that yeah. we couldn't do that. It sounds no, like we, we just, can. No, 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 should, no. We just can't sell it. We get, when they come in, they just hopefully hand the money over and get the business license. We can't. Yeah, say, if they just buy one, then then that's fine. But yeah. they they're not required to. Is the is no, the no. Thing. We require it for being require. a participant in the market. That's what that's what it has always been. Is that we as a board 
and as um, as having participation in the Rosin Farmers Market as a vendor, we required them to have a city business. Right. Market. Yeah, I understand. It's just on the right on the top of our business license. It says if you do under two thousand dollars, because it's the RCW. So as soon as they read that, so now it's a conflicting. It's a well, policy. If they don't want to pay, then they don't. Yeah, then they don't. Yeah. They just don't. So that, I mean, you guys can have whatever policy you want. I just can't. Yeah, then they can't be vendors yeah. in our market. And then they yeah. can't sell. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's where it was like. So, okay. Yeah. Honestly. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is good. I was just trying to play. Continue your message. Yes. Yeah. 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 Continue your message. That's what you should do. Sounds like a positive yeah. message you guys have going yes. on right now. That was a good message. Yeah. My other questions were just if your booth fees, if you've researched, if they're commensurate with similarly popular markets and your considerations for next year. Yeah. Um, our booth fees are right in line. I think they're, if I did this research last year and I don't have numbers in front of me, but if I remember, we were slightly above Ellensburg, mm -hmm. slight, and then right on par with um, Wenatchee and Edmonds. I, I looked okay. in as six of the ones. Then there's ones like Ballard, right. which are like the colossal giants that. But also maybe percent. our market vendors aren't necessarily ones that are also going. Some of them, so most of them not. Yeah. So our booth fees, though, um, we don't charge a membership. Um, some other markets mm -hmm. charge membership right. as well as requiring the business license. Like Ellensburg requires city like business license and um, the regular booth fees. So because we did not. Do that business license, it was straight booth fees, and that was yeah, the all they paid. So it yeah. actually it somewhat equates to Ellensburg, right. and then uh, I, what we upped it to was like five dollars for yeah. right. That's what I was going to ask. Are you going to increase it like five dollars every year? Is just cost of living, and the reason I no, oh, well, we don't have we've increased it once, and so you pay thirty dollars right now. Is that correct? Um, Farmers. Do they pay that every weekend they show up as $30? Um, they pay it only if 30 is if they pay at the beginning of the season for all 14. Okay. Um, it's like a prepaid pre discount. 35 if they are okay. paying per day. And then crafters pay uh, 40. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm just looking at the $5 yeah. at 85 per session. And Roughly 400 bucks is say times 13 sessions. You know that's 2,000 bucks extra in your in your fees, and that's why if you look at your business plan, and just sort of figuring out where your numbers are tight and how you can inflate those um, well, by putting it on your you know putting it on your vendors. Well, we we are we, sort of requiring a city business fee. We lost some vendors, and now but they haven't been doing it this year, right? They didn't do any business right business license fees, right? Yeah, that's correct. So when did you start? Uh, requiring a business license. Almost mm -hmm. three years ago. We did it for two years. And then this year, you 16, we stopped 17, because we were told not to yeah. anymore. Right. No? And so I thought that that was, you know, 17, I think we were effectively saving that $50 or whatever. Yeah, for the, for the whole length of the right. season. But that same year, we, the year, but, it was a year that we recently raised prices. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Have you thought about reapplying for tax lodge? Money for um, can we do can they do that in their yes, status? Yeah. And the reason I ask is there's a lot more money and um, I mean different process. You track out of town and that's you're right. such a no brainer. I mean I was on tax law with yeah. Janine. Yeah. It's a no brainer where you guys stand right now and bringing people in that well, I would think you can get a ten thousand dollar fifteen thousand dollar. If you recall from those meetings when we did apply, mm -hmm. we could not prove how many heads and beds we put. Right. And but it would seem to have done a lot better job though the past couple of years of doing that. We stopped um, two years ago. We actually we lost money. Lost money. Lost money. Well, I remember it's the one year with the, the laptop things debacle. We definitely lost money. But I'm asking, just in general, have you thought about reapplying and reapproaching it with the different layout and different mm -hmm. format they have? Yes, sir. I'm not going to do it. Okay, I'm just, ask, just asking. It's a chunk of money, that's why I asked that you can get it. takes work, but it's, it's that, it's there. Yeah. I think it's because we had, I think, two years where we lost money because we were denied what we had documentation for. Mm -hmm. um, so, and they, and so we just said, you know what, we don't want to take that risk. We have everything supporting our, our funding plan, and they 
they didn't accept it. And so whatever happened, we had phone meetings afterwards to try to claim like three thousand dollars, and that was was that the that was, that was I wasn't on that course. Yeah. It's, it's a sad thing. It should be possible, but it's that was prior to me right. getting there. Yeah. Or not. I have a just. Oh, I'm sorry. It I'm is sorry. a lot of work. Just oh, one last work. comment. We don't have to really discuss it. It's just for a one year. It was on Washington Street for one mm -hmm. or two, yeah. and just throwing that out there as a citizen comment. Mm -hmm. yeah. so mm -hmm. There were a couple of problems. One is now there's right. a whole challenge, so that changes it. The other problem is that the street uh, has well, a bigger hit to it, so the, uh, the, the tables the didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Everybody so loved we, that, that spot. It, uh, it actually had a limited, we had a reduced number of right. spaces right. as well. It was everybody. Oh, boy. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, as the market manager, we dealt with all the vendors. <laughs> <laughs> we have the empty lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a lot of people that I know, businesses that work on the street, like the Eagles oh. and um, Mark Marshall's, love having it there. They're 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 they use that field. Yeah. They packed a bunch of rides. Oh, I see. Yeah, they use that for the hotel. It was empty lot at that time. I see. Okay. The situation with the city business licenses that we talked about for a minute, that was an ex that was an attempt that we made to try and infuse some cash into the city's accounts. Right. But it seemed like, uh, well, then this year, it seemed like, that, you know, that was a decision that we made without collaborating with the city. And then it kind of came out that it was actually making more work for the city than it was to receive those funds. At least that's what, what was communicated. Yeah. So I think what needs to happen is there is a lot of money flying around on the, on the street. Mm -hmm. So if we can all work together to figure out a way that makes sense to channel some of those dollars back to the city. And I do want so to that, go to a couple board meetings and I know the exact kind of topics. Sure. Sure. That right. So that we're not creating team. something that makes it so that the market can't carry on mm -hmm. or something that makes it so that the vendors mm -hmm. can't justify coming out. There's got to be a, a solution. Yeah. Well, I've had a concern because there's a lot of cash sales. I mean, 90% cash sales, maybe maybe more. And, and for me, I, I'm, I'm looking at loss in sales tax off of that. If they're not kept, if they're doing so many cash sales, how honest are they being on their books for their businesses and to capture those sales? I mean, that's a huge loss for us. And I think roughly there's $30,000 a market, $40,000 a market. Um, what was in the paper, something like that, right? So you start looking at that, you had a 13 times. I want to know how we're capturing that sales in our town. And, and that's important to me because yeah. it is an impact not just on me or the residents, but that money should be here. And so that's a concern of mine on how we can, how that gets back to us, um, because it is our space. And, and so that's something that is a concern for me on how they're doing their businesses and how, I mean, I don't know there's a lot you can do about it because they have your independent businesses, but um, that, that's something for me that's probably been the biggest concern is watching the cash sales and um, is it being reported properly and are we getting a difference in return are we, what are we capturing out of those cash sales tax, out of those cash sales? I will say in your defense, any cash sales business is difficult to deal with. I'll give you a yes. great example. Mm -hmm. There's a car wash down in Cleon. Do they report all the quarters that go in that machine? <laughs> There's not a receipt for it. Anytime you're in a cash business, whether it's a bar, a restaurant, a farmer's market, you, you can't capture them all. It's a unique problem, and it's not unique to you. So I do want to make two comments now. Number one, <clears throat> I really appreciate all your help. I thought the market was the best one I've been to yet this season. Enjoy the heck out. You guys do a phenomenal job. I do also back you staying where you're at in a big way. Our park can't take that kind of usage. Um, if you look at just the Roslyn Yard, which has started out the season being a beautiful piece of green grass, <laughs> it took its beating on those weekends too. And I don't think we can do that to our park. And we have enough other events going down there. And all you're doing, as you stated, is moving a parking problem from the downtown area to a residential area, which doesn't have as big as streets. So uh, I'm not in favor of moving it anywhere from where it's at right now. And the businesses I know did profit from the market being there. Mm -hmm. um, ask any one of the business owners downtown. They were thrilled with it. They had great weather for it. It's a great job. Uh, thank you very much for your time and, and the effort you put into it. I would like to... I would agree completely with that analysis myself. 
What was offered, though, was uh, an opportunity to sit with the admin committee and work out their details. Yes. So my question is, honestly, you know, what kind of time frame do you need to have that meeting? Um, well, we, we start at the beginning of the year planning and make uh, plans for the year, and long about um, March or April, we send out to the businesses, to the vendors, here's what we're going to charge this year, here's changes in rules, here's you know, changes in policies and procedures. So we, we have to have it before then, before they start uh, applying. So we decision actually, by March, pretty much. Uh, right? Yeah, actually, it would be better for any budget planning that we might need to do to start it as sooner rather than later, because we might need to look for other types of funds and to help support whatever plans that come out of it. So mm -hmm. I would prefer doing it before January so that things that are being disseminated out um, could be, be kind of set. And if we have to raise vendor prices or we need to do membership, we need to search the background because that needs to be out by March 1 and that's time frame. So having it sooner rather than later in the like, winter quarter would be best. Well, you know, I'll be honest with you, the, the, the budget season is upon us and a lot of our time is taken up with that. Um, however, I do appreciate the, the point about how you know, starting, knowing where you're starting and you start your planning is helpful. <clears throat> I also appreciate the fact that if we wait until January, a lot of this discussion has to happen again because of the new people out there. It may take us several meetings to come to agreement. That's possible. So there, may, there probably should be some time factored in for that. Stop that. So I just <laughs> 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 like you didn't end your sentence. <laughs> 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 the end of my sentence is we need, uh, I, I would like to make a, a date tonight. You're looking at it be before the new year, correct? That's yes, right. yes, yes, I think so. First Tuesday. So that, so that we can all no, plan no, no, no. and be prepared and, 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 and start that conversation. I'd rather okay. start it. A little earlier, mm -hmm. you know, rather than at the last minute, because, gosh, there's also there's all, all other things at the last minute. Yeah, late October sounds good, then you have November. And then, yeah. and then we get through budget, and we have a week towards the end of Christmas. Like, yeah, so maybe get. October, mm -hmm. can you be ready the first, mm -hmm. the second Tuesday, or do you need the fourth oh, Tuesday? I, we don't need time to prepare to sit down and have the initial discussion. And when the time, we'll have some thought we're going to show up. In terms of the budget process, um, this uh, this discussion is probably going to take an hour. It'll probably take the whole meeting, front, honestly. So, in you know, what was staff planning on the budget process? And what, what is the, the second Tuesday or the fourth Tuesday? The better Tuesday will be the, uh, the amendment, the eighth or the twenty second. Yeah. So, so what, what is the what is the best for staff planning? October twenty second. Is that acceptable to you folks? So October 22nd, it is then 5 o'clock yeah, here. Five the dedicated meeting for that purpose. Would you rather do it at okay. 4 and then have budget finance after that? I accept that. Uh, and 4 o'clock is acceptable to you for us. You're going to have to do 4 because you've got public sense. works at 5. Yeah, it will just depend yeah. on which of the board members are available. We're not going to stick it off the line. 4.30. Yeah, we'll do 4.30 on the 22nd. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Can oh, we delay? There's another meeting at 5. It's a public works. What's a public works? Public works. I can move my public works meeting and move every day. Okay, let's do that. Let's have 5 o'clock for the market board, 4 o'clock for the admin meeting with a budget discussion. So 5 o'clock market on the 22nd. On the 22nd of October. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. We can move public works. So, what would you like to do after the should we, should we just sort of your cost of what you do, Jim. Right. So what you bring today. I mean, I think I don't think you're far off of what you need. I mean, I really think it's just discussing what our new fees are and so forth, and where we end up, yeah. and what we can make work for everybody. I want to discuss That's really the this business license thing too. Yeah, yeah. and the yeah. business license yeah. thing. So, so, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, th I mean, I think that's really it. I mean, it's just getting to a point that we can keep the market going and everybody making the, the, the city gets their fees covered and um, so we're not losing money and one more thing. get going. One more thing. I'm sure it's been brought up over the years. You know, Kathleen and I were vendors. It's all really But what about the street over here? I mean, does that ever come up in board? 
Yeah. We can set up another meeting and talk about location. <laughs> well, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> it's all. 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 Uh, then you were suggesting you might try that rather than moving to second. Washington or Second yeah. Avenue. However, that's the route that the detour goes. Yeah, the phrase. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but that's right. one so, but that, you know. Well, and I'll just tell you right now, the chief, the chief has a different plan for the parade. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, but that's leave it on the table for you guys to think about. But y'all meet with Chief before too, and we'll, yeah. well, hopefully with uh, Jeff Adams as well, and we'll talk more. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. And then, now that you brought that up, up in our storefront meeting last week, that was actually one of the things Jim Nichols had drawn up in one of his books that was just part of a quick discussion. It wasn't about moving the market or anything, but it, I had not seen that. And it, it, the way it was presented was, was really cool. Um, it obviously contributed to probably area that's not ours, which is Acadia land, but um, it was just sort of a neat format. It might be another idea for an alternate if it's not a change, but it would be something to look at. And that, I think everybody just opened in the discussion of throwing ideas out so we, everybody's on the same page. At least before March. Let's, let's throw be clear. it all out there. October 22nd is about the rules for the market in yeah. general, not about yeah. location. Yeah. 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 We're not going to hammer you on location. Okay. Okay. So I have a couple things. I, I love the market. I love where it's at. I, um, you guys volunteer everything. Uh, Lindsay kicks butt. You guys all do an awesome job. So keep up the great work, even when it gets really stressful. Uh, <laughs> but my biggest, my two complaints, which I hate to be a complainer because nobody likes to complain, is pedestrian safety crossing 903. That has to be, I believe, addressed in the near future because it's a city's liability, but it's reflecting on a cause from what's what you guys are putting on the street. Uh, but it all comes down on the city's shoulders if a kid or a, a person or anybody gets hit because the traffic is, we all know, is horrible on 903. And it's getting worse on 2nd Street, but we need to address the 903 traffic. If it's putting up flags, um, if it's putting up a sign that tells pedestrians to be smart and look both ways, just something that we can, we, we know that washed up, put those signs up for for cars, but it's, it's just, any time that's we know it's going to happen and it's the city's liability and i want to try to be any way that we can prevent that so that's one a crossing guard crossing yeah if it's paying a crossing guard which is an extent out there because then it's more on your guys's budget and so forth but that's maybe where fees are escalated because of that but then my other my other thing is is cleaning um after the market it always seems like our downtown is just left a little messier than how it, how it was left or how it was when people got onto the market like you have the food vendors that spill out their grease you have the kettle corns that have their their popcorn mess and you might say no but you look on the side of our building where we let the food market go and I have grease but across my door and across the back of my building and if you look still in front of Harper's there is big grease spots and so it's not I'm not suggesting cleaning every week but maybe in the middle of the the middle of the summer do a, a downtown pressure wash or a clean and then at the end of the year do a downtown pressure wash and a clean just because it really definitely i think looks sunday afternoon monday morning it looks kind of gross and that's just and maybe gross is a little stretch but it, it's it definitely could look a lot nicer for our downtown we started to uh, towards the end of the market was trying to make sure that we were out there sweeping and the minions were out there at least sweeping off the street, which, you know, mm -hmm. probably lasted like 10 minutes with all the winds of summer. But at least it was like picking up some of the popcorn and the corn husks and the residue that was left behind. But um, but there is, that would, I think that's a good recommendation. And again, not to be a complainer, it's, you guys are doing an awesome job. This is one of the two little things I could see different from the market. And that's a tough one. Yes. Yeah. We, you know, every year we try and clamp down the vendors a little bit harder, like especially the food because it's really messy with their grease disposal mm -hmm. and, and leaving, you know, as and from a management perspective, like you said, Lindsay kicks butt, um, it's hard to get them to like actually act good. Yeah. 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 So but you know, we should be constantly exploring ways to improve that. Mm -hmm. 
enforce it? Because I think we yeah. actually had created a policy where they had to bring cardboard under any grease item. And yeah, there's no idea. disposal that goes into the stream. And they had to carry out all of their boxes and their trash and things. But um, I don't know how we are, because it gets so busy. Oh, yeah. And so yeah. the enforcement we might have to be. The only other suggestion I have is it was not from me, it was from somebody else, but, and I, I actually agree with it, we, when we started talking about like a crossing guard of some sort, is somebody here at this building, as you come into town, about directing parking, um, of getting people down this street, and, and maybe a volunteer there actually trying to coordinate the parking, because it becomes a conundrum of cars, you know, back, nobody's really has a, uh, any system to it, right, it's just a free-for-all. Um, but I think it would, it, would, it would help a little bit of the impact parking if we were directing people with, uh, you drive past and the signs are not always where it needs to be, I think. It's not very visual, so if there's somebody there actually making people go into the mar market parking and directing them down this way, and then maybe a volunteer trying to structure some form of parking, like, hey, we're going to line them up this way, and then let's try to create rows. Just, just trying to help a few things that I think would help with parking scenarios. Yeah, if it's managed. Yeah, a little bit of management, I think, could go a long ways. Yeah, I just think a little bit of management could go a long ways. I don't know that you have the volunteers. That's a lot of weekends. I mean, I get it. It's You need a volunteer for probably six hours, not four, right? Well, you like know, as of prior now, and yeah. after. But, like, as of now, we don't. But maybe we could get some more high school. Yeah, it's just a thought. It was just a suggestion. I said I would bring it up. So I... Mm -hmm. So on, on that, uh, we do... We, and the, yes, they sometimes aren't out right away, but we do have parking signs pointing this way. Yep. No, I've seen the signs, but I think a physical person is needed. Yeah. And then I park my truck mm -hmm. there in the parking lot, like, to start the first row. So yeah, you're the only one that follows the direction. <laughs> no, no. And then, but it is, like, I can show you cam footage that if I park my truck there, people will follow it along and then do another row. So... No, but I, I think your parking but, yeah. could be consolidated significantly better with a volunteer. You know, a, a, an orange vest and a, a couple red red gloves or orange flags, and you could. And I think you might be surprised. You might get tips out of things like that. Maybe have somebody with a little Roku machine riding people to the market. On a Why not? the meeting on the 22nd you staff would like to you know your position on how long this business license field thing was for our discussion. I don't know if it was so much onerous other than the fact that we just can't like we can't institute a policy to require them. Yeah. We're gonna let go of that yeah. right now. Okay. They're gonna make it require the folks. Okay. Yeah, I just so I, then, so I don't then know then how that work, will work. Is that will that is that the yeah. 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 But what the bummer was is they wanted the online service, and I get it. The yeah. online service is the only is efficient, right? So they're, they're by 2022, it'll be on everybody. Has okay. Yeah. So I mean, I think that was their biggest thing. Yeah. They just didn't have online to work. Well, transition. Yeah. Okay. Good. I just didn't want to create a situation that was that was difficult for staff. Yeah. No, I think it was just the we okay. just couldn't enforce it at that point. Great conversation. Okay. A couple of new business items. Um, the bottom line here is our commissions and committees have different amounts of years. Yeah. And uh, and then there's a lot of turnover. Yes. So having some of them four, all one of them was four, one of them was six, <laughs> um, and then one of them is two. So I want to make all the two. Yep. Because the change. I think that makes sense. Yeah, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. And then they expire alternating years, so you don't yeah. have the whole commission expire. No, I think that's exactly what you should do. I think that's a great, great, great idea. And that way, you know, people can keep in mind. Yeah. It just allows the, the term of people quitting to cross and try to fill these positions. Yeah, I like that. Idea. I'll make a motion to approve the municipal code section. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. yeah. To the uh, relating to the membership on the planning and the historical preservation commission. I'll second. Any more discussion? Yeah. Are, are we requiring current members to reapply for their position each year? Because I don't think that's right. Well, after their two years. After their term is up, they reapply. At the end of their term. Yeah, which they have to do. Just like what we do. Yeah. We have never done that in the past. Never done it. 
have that is not true. Have well, well, you've no. never done that. I've never reapplied. Except for when I never. term ended and I. Yeah, when the yeah, term ended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When the term ends. Right, but. But when the term ended and I, I was no longer commissioner, I had to reapply. But prior to the time before it was like, do you want to continue? Yes, I never. I only filled out a form ten years ago. And I've, oh, never well, seen, I've never seen a commission a commission member write. I'm, I need to reapply until this year. Yeah, see the cemetery. Never. They never. They That's wrong. That's wrong. We shouldn't be doing that. Well, we already apply every time. We have to do a term limit. Like I do it every two years. I pay my thirty-five dollars, and I go down to Ellensburg the and do it every. The mayor can time. kick you off a commission any freaking time he wants. He can't do that for you. That's the difference. That's the difference. Well, so then why? Then so I guess so I mean, if we do that, then we don't need terms at all. I'm, I'm, I'm oh, yeah, fine, why I'm fine with cleaning up the different numbers and, mm -hmm. the, and the rotating whatever. I'm just saying, when a person who has been up participating in the commission desires to continue, that person should not be required to go through the paperwork of reapplying. That's that's, that's, that's right. That's could, right. could we dumb down the paperwork where it just says, "Do you want to reapply or not?" But it shouldn't be open to other new members. That but yeah, 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 it should. You're not giving other people the opportunity. We don't have a situation where people are fighting. No, so <laughs> that is not a problem. So, so we hope to. We want that. We want that. We want that encouragement of other people to come and and be there, part of it. Like we can't limit that. Well, hoping doesn't make it reality. The reality is that they don't flock in for that. You know, I mean, and seriously. I mean, I, I'd love that too. But that is not the situation that we live in. And what we live in is people desire, have investment, can want to continue. I think they should be allowed to continue, unless, of course, there's a reason to remove that person. And that is the, the a reason to remove that person is the only reason you should be removed from us from a commission that you are performing and, 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 and cooperating on. Now, if the situation changes and there are 100 people for the position, we can have the discussion again. But I, I don't think I'm going to live long enough for that to be a problem with the city of Boston. Frank. So would there not be term? Uh, I'm, this is yeah, an administrative why? thing. This is an administrative thing. I'm just trying to figure out saying. what it means well, yeah. and if what's there is what's a what defines a term if there's no application there's no end or there's no end to it. Then it's just like oh, mm -hmm. I want to keep being a volunteer. Okay, I've decided I'm done volunteering. Now you have a position open. Which is how it happens now. Or yes. Yes. I don't know. I don't think it's that big of a deal for to have somebody reapply every two years. All I know is that I have had complaints from people who sit on commissions and say, I've been on the commission for many years. I'm participating at a level that other people are unable to participate at. Why do they have to go through the, the big form to be redone? Because, you know, frankly, we know that person already. We know everything about that person. We know how they operate. We know how they cooperate. We know what their ideas are. So there's really no reason to put them through the same thing as if they were brand new. Now, if there are you know ten people for that same position, okay, maybe we would we look at that. But I don't, or just I don't one see other, that. or just one other person. person. When this term goes up in two years, that gives the other person that's sitting next to that commissioner chair their time to maybe step up and say, you know what, I'm going to put this my name in the hat. I know they have to put their name in the hat, so I'm going to put my name in the hat too. So then it actually is a choice there. Not every year. Fine. I know I'm going to get in. If there is competition, fine. If there is not competition, it seems silly to me. But there I'll is competition right now in the cemetery commission. All right. But when was the last time you had proper competition on the CAC committee, for example? Never. No. Never. Okay. So so why should that person who has no competition be required to put, to, to to apply this as if they were a beginner? This is this is well, this is not right. No, I agree with what you're saying because in theory. Their application is already on file. Mm -hmm. so We're I more than that. We know everything about them. We've been watching right. them perform. So I agree right. with that. Yeah. I mean, why, they don't have to fill it out again. Right. Thank you. It's That's just, all I'm asking for. Other, otherwise, I, I'm on fine with this. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if, yeah, yeah that's fine. You can keep filing records. Yeah. No, no, I, I, but I but there needs to be some mechanism where when a term is over yeah. for a position that if that person wants to continue being in that position, there needs to be some communication they would just tell of us that. that. So we would right. so we would publicly announce every time there's people up. Mm -hmm. And if somebody else wants to apply they can and then mm -hmm. the people that are, want it just say I'm my I'm on file. You do that simply in the water bill or or I'm set that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. 
And then that puts the onus on the people that may want a seat. To so actually do yeah. something. Yeah. 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 Actually do it. Or yeah. 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 So that you will be assertive about your seat position. And yeah. the sitting person already mm -hmm. has an application on file. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if they've ever been required. Like the reappointments weren't necessarily required. Uh, they were filled out hers. She's been well, there. they She's could, been there but they the could just day. give a letter of interest saying they wanted to be reappointed as well. Right. It didn't necessarily have to be the application. Uh, she told me she was required to fill that out. Is it a big oh. application? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's one sheet. It's one Is there sheet. a way to put on yeah. there like instead of filling it all out again with all Circle the personal information, like a checkbox that's like I'm reapplying for. My current I'm I'm sure. Sure. position. An email, yeah. an email works. I mean, yeah, yeah. just some a letter of interest something or something that I don't know if it goes in the code or where it goes. That it's a policy or what that to capture that. You I mean, have we have be new people that don't fill it out. They just do a letter of interest. Oh. Which so is also acceptable. Yeah, which is yeah. 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 especially when it's too open. Mm -hmm. So then, do we need to change? We no, just change the application. Okay. But the yeah, wording in here is. We yeah, because that's just. That. We just have been advertising them and then they either do a letter or just so they refill out the application. Well, wasn't there something about residency? Is, is that. There's no change. We didn't change any of that. Okay. All three of them require it, except for the planning and historic preservation for people that have to work in the industry. If we don't have somebody else yeah. in that center. And we're, yeah. If we already we have an architect, we can't have an architect from Ellensburg. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If there were none, then we needed it. So yeah. Then we could. Yeah. Okay. If it fit, if it fit our profile of what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. right. You said the cemetery commission? No. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. No the cemetery right. and Stacy both. Are All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, and they're written too, except for the the two at large positions. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 so motion is still in. <laughs> yeah, do we need a motion? No, no we made a motion. motion. We seconded. Okay, seconded. okay, so all in favor of the two years, say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. all right. Do we need do to do it do again? We need to do it one more time. I'll make a motion amending Roslyn Municipal Code Section 18.15.080 relating to membership of the Cemetery Commission. I'll second that. This is also for two years. Yes. All in favor say aye. Yes. Aye. Are we opposed? Okay. Don't think we have any citizen comments unless you have any questions. I just have, I have a citizen comment from Lee Beardson because she wasn't able to come here. So I, I'm going to truncate 11. It's a letter that council was given, but if I may just be a piece of it. So I'm also losing my voice. So. <clears throat> Janine Rodine, clearly on North B Street, <clears throat> on behalf of Lee Beardsley, and um, I'm just going to read part of this. It's a rather long letter. And I would please ask you to read it since you're right here. <clears throat> and it is a topic that's dear to me as well. So, um, <clears throat> Design Review has played a pivotal role in maintaining Roslyn's historic integrity. It was a major tool in filtering out strip malls, inappropriate development, and modern designs. At this time of increased pressure, the council must recognize that Design Review must be strengthened. The council's, council's recent code change allowing the mayor to withdraw the design review from the RPHC bows to pressures unrelated to Rosalind's historic nature and, in fact, potentially weakens review to the point of a watered down river snap. Now, at a time of greater need, rather than bolster design review to help Rosalind survive these pressures, you have mortally damaged its functionality. <clears throat> because the primary purpose of the design review is to maintain Rosalind's historic integrity, if Rosalind is to maintain its historic nature, design review must function its and that's just a piece of the letter. I would ask you to read that. I told her I would read it. Yeah, you guys have the full copy of it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, remind the council that Lee Beersley was pivotal in the initial uh, ordinance that was set out with her. Just in case for those who didn't. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, council concerns and chairs? <coughs> See you with the library function. Yeah. Saturday. Yeah. 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Was, he, was anybody going, able to go on the Domery tour today? I uh, did. Oh. We only got to the intake pond. Um, we didn't get to, we drove up the hill so we could see where the comma section four land was. Um, but we didn't actually get on the ground there because <coughs> we kind of ran out of time and the concerns about if we could find the right road. And so. They took a lot of pictures, you know, for TNC's purposes in terms of kind of just seeing the picture, seeing what it's like, being able to capture images that they can use for 
Like, you know, promotion, basically. Um, so, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's kind of just informational, but. Yeah. Cool. So, nothing new really there, but it was interesting to see. And to actually get up high on elevation and look out and then think about what the map is like. Again, sort of that on yeah. the ground versus on the map, seeing how it fits together. So. So we had that meeting with Jan in the last two weeks ago? Yes. And then this Friday I'm meeting with city's treasurer and then Tiffany from TNC who is actually preparing the um, application. Yeah, so we're going to look at the Eagle computer process and just kind of work on the paperwork side of it. Did you get any of your questions answered that you had? Yeah, so I had st I still have one major concern that I just keep thinking about nonstop is, uh, so we will be looking at buying this or purchasing this land with all the values connected with it at the time, and then after the purchase, all those values will be stripped away from the land. It'll be conservation. It'll be conservation. Value based. Yeah. Yeah, and there's really not a way around that as far as I can tell. Yeah, that's about watershed protection. That's yeah. Well, yeah, but, but but my big concern too is <laughs> ten years down the road, if we are maxed out and we are rev our our budget's still the same. What can right. we do? We can't do that. We can't manage that land, and so well, we can't barely. tie ourselves without an exit plan. So you you you're thinking we need an exit plan to avoid protecting the watershed? Possibly. Is that, is that what you're, is yeah. That what if it's if it's drilling a well next to the uh, next to the bridge and getting rid of the two miles that are on private land in Sunkadia, you know or it's there's impossible to drill a well next to the river. You know that's impossible. But uh, it's, it's totally legal. Let's just, well, let's just say it's it is our watershed. We're spending it's over a million dollars. I know well, we're spending a million dollars over um, this grant process. Maybe there's other things we need to look at as a city that can benefit our water just as good as spending a million dollars or a million plus right. than owning the land. So we can't stress our... Is that what that would be? I mean, well, that's what we have to put our thinking up. That's why we're voted here. They said think of these alternatives. Way, the, the pro property ownership is the only way to protect that watershed. Well, that, that, that is definitely one opinion from the council members. But I think we really need to look at it because we can't strap our citizens. Again, our revenues are horrible. And we're about to look at purchasing a bunch of land that's worth nothing, and what is their exit plan? It's not worth nothing, it's worth a lot of shit. It's priceless. Okay. But to the citizens of Roslyn, it's if we have no money, it's worth nothing to sell. We, we have an easy, easy plan. 50 cents or 70 cents increase on the water bill will pay in a sustainable, predictable, and certain way into the future for this purchase. Okay. But we, that you're asking to up our water, which yes, we've upped our water a lot, and that perception towards people and our residents is going to be a is going to be a, a different one, I think. So for protection of the watershed, people will. will but be no, it's not just pay. protection of the watershed because there's four corners on this on this map, and we only need that one corner. There are they, and a and a comma on top. There's a lot of land that I don't think we really need. But I think that a big issue that TNC is posing. To, in the consideration of why it's necessary is fire. And that the pond is uphill. And that's the that's direction of fire. fire. Is the fact that your family is involved in real estate development part of why you're asking this question? You're crazy on that. That is way out of line. Yeah, that is, and that is that, yeah I know, that is way out of line. <laughs> We're a long ways from God, Don't go personal on me, okay? Just ask me. No, that's, a, that's honestly.